On today's episode, I talk about any wrestling news going on in the WWE world right now and any rumors, as well as I look at the WrestleMania 33 outlook on the booked matches, as well as I go over how I would book WrestleMania 33. All that and more, right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat episode number seven on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. The show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about trending topics in the WWE. You can follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP and by using the hashtag TSNH when this podcast is on there and to talk about it. You can follow the podcast itself on YouTube, SoundCloud, and now we are back on iTunes. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and today's episode is entitled WrestleMania 33. And basically on today's show, guys, we are going to talk about a lot of topics, uh, mainly WrestleMania, obviously, as the title of this uh, podcast. But today we're going to go through some wrestling news, uh, talk about any rumors currently so that are uh, related to WrestleMania and unrelated. Uh, we're going to go over the outlook of WrestleMania 33 and the rumored uh, and booked matches for WrestleMania 33. Also, I'm going to go over of how I would book WrestleMania 33 uh, this year. So, some good topics today on the Sunday Night Heat. Uh, I thought I'd get this out there to you guys. So, we'll just start off. And we'll start off with wrestling news. You know what? Just for that, uh, I feel like we should be playing some uh, breaking news music from the Lowdown Show. I'm going to play it right now. <laughs> All right, I got my intro, breaking news music there, and we'll talk about some news and rumors. Well, will start off, it has to do with Vince McMahon and Braun Strowman. So according to reports, back in January, there was a segment where Braun Strowman demanded his title shot from Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens in the same segment and also referred to the championship as a title belt. It is being said that Vince McMahon was not happy with this, and according to Mick Foley... Not sure where he said this, but Vince was extremely pissed and never seen Vince yell at someone like that before, like he did to Braun Strowman after this so-called segment. It is also being said that the reason Vince was mad because Strowman did not say title match and didn't refer to the championship belt or didn't refer the and referred to the championship belt as a title belt, and he was referring to the Universal Championship. Really? Seriously, Vince, you're actually got that mad over someone say, "Well, it is a title belt. What the hell is it else?" Oh, are you because you didn't say championship belt? Are you kidding me right now? You yelled at someone because he said title belt, and he called it a title shot. That's what you guys have been calling it for like the past eighty years. When did it ever change? But you got mad because you didn't say championship match. <laughs> it just shows how senile Vince is getting. When he gets mad at you for not calling it a championship match, you call it. So, so whoever's backstage, don't, be, don't call it a, a title shot or a title belt. You get your ass chewed by Vince McMahon. That's just crazy. And I heard it, it, to Braun Strowman of all people, one of his his guys, him and Roman are like you know his dudes. So I I don't understand how he got that mad over it. Like it's, it's just crazy. And it just shows you, man. You can be one of Vince's guys. And still get your ass chewed by him. Vince will probably still love him at the end of the day. But that's another story. We'll move on. Plans for Kurt Angle in the WWE. Since being inducted into the Hall of Fame, many people wondered when Kurt Angle would step foot in a WWE ring again. Kurt Angle has expressed that he wants to come back for one final match with the company and that he is eating cleaner now and working out better and is in better health than he ever has been. Kurt Angle has expressed interest to work with American Alpha, saying they have a lot of talent and loves their work they've put into their be. And he says they remind him of Shelton and Charlie Haas, if you remember, those were Kurt Angle's prodigies back when it was Team Angle. And he says that they remind him of them, but better. So Kurt Angle has a lot of faith in American Alpha. That'd be pretty cool. One scenario being discussed right now is Kurt Angle versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania. It's being said that WWE could go forward with the setting up of the feud with Shane McMahon, but Shane bringing in Kurt Angle to wrestle for him and to wrestle Styles. Uh, I guess basically saying, like, you know, how Styles calls himself the best in the world and the face that runs the place. Well, then, you know, 
Shane could be like, okay, let's put that to the test, and then brings in Kurt Angle. I can kind of see that happening. Um, so yeah, Shane bringing in Kurt Angle to wrestle Styles in Orlando instead of himself, and Shane would be in the corner of Kurt Angle. That would be pretty sick. I mean, that would uh, boost up then the shitty rumor card WrestleMania has now, which we'll get into later. So Kurt Angle versus AJ Styles would be so, so good, and I hope that everybody pulls the trigger on that. Because AJ Styles versus Shane is just like the worst idea I've ever heard, man. Bo- Shane can't wrestle, okay? As much as you goons out there and your critics saying, Oh, but what about last year's WrestleMania, Kyle? Um, Yeah, Undertaker carried that match. And if you remember, Shane basically had one spot. And obviously it was that giant hell of a spell spot. You know, or, or jump off the cell spot. You know what? I give him props for doing that, man. It takes a lot of balls to do that. But come on. What else was entertaining about that match? Nothing. So, you know what, Styles versus uh, Shane McMahon is just a no-no in my books. Move on here. Strowman and Reigns at Fastlane. According to reports, there is a big finish being set up for the end of this match, so I'm guessing that's probably going to be the main event. Uh, And no, when I say big finish, we're not referring to the big show. Let's tell you big show fans out there, so everyone relax. Uh, It's being said that at the end of the month, uh, or at the end of the match, sorry, month <laughs> technically down the month and then the master will be big implications on the wrestlemania picture uh well duh fast lane is the last pay-per-view before wrestlemania you're quoting it fast lane to wrestlemania well duh gee i wish what the implication can be for SummerSlam? that make no sense enough of that and apparently there are also big plans for Strowman at wrestlemania being discussed as well and I have my rumors and predictions of what that is going to be later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. Move on to some other news. If anyone cares about this, I do because I'm a New England Patriots fan. Rob Gronkowski. And if you don't know, he is a tight end for the New England Patriots. For those of you who don't follow football. Uh, Mojo Riley recently had an interview with ESPN. Well, what else is he going to do? And what the hell is Mojo Riley doing on TV right now? Uh, besides drinking 12 Red Bulls at once. I don't know what he's doing. The topic of Ron Gronkowski, or Rob Gronkowski and WWE in the future came up and during the interview with Mojo Riley, and Mojo went on by saying, Rob has been a fan for years. Whenever the stars are aligned, I can tell you that he'll be ra- or I guess, uh, raring for the occasion. I don't know what that really means. Basically meaning that Rob Gronkowski is going to be on the doorstep of WWE as soon as the stars are aligned. Uh, Mojo went on to say that, uh, if he does indeed sign with the WWE, he ha- wants to do something with Rob creatively. And what, you're going to have the Hype Bros 2.0 with Hyper Gronkowski? What, he's going to drink 18 Red Bulls and Mojo's going to drink 12? What, is it gonna be the Red Bull Bros? Like, what's going to go-, go on here? I don't know what the hell you're going to do with Rob Gronkowski and WWE. He's probably going to be the worst wrestler I've ever seen. Yeah, because he played football. He's a-, he's a good wrestler. Like, come on. Get out of here. Stay with football, Rob. Move on to some other news. Magnus to stay with TNA. According to F4WOnline.com, TNA has offered former world champion Nick Magnus Aldis a contract to return to the company. For those of you who don't know out there and are living under a rock, Magnus is currently married to current WWE SmackDown superstar and woman Mickey James. Yes, if you didn't know that. She, they're married. They're together. Her, her real name is... I don't even remember. What's Mickey James' real name? Is it Mickey Aldis? I don't know. Something like that. But her last name's Aldis in, in you know, her real name, not her ring name. At this point, a deal has not yet to be signed. However, Magnus and TNA have recently been involved in serious talks. Apparently, when Magnus left the last time, reports are saying that he felt that TNA didn't have the position to financially pay Magnus according to his structured contract. Cool, that's smart. Let's go back to a company who, oh, I think they're getting better financially. Maybe they'll be able to pay me. And then, no, they're going to go in the dumps. And then you're going to be in the same position you were when the last time you left the goddamn company. Why don't you just sign with NXT? That's the most creative thing and like the most logical thing to do. Your wife is in the company. Why don't you go to the company where your wife is? I don't understand that. You know what? There's probably other things behind it, but whatever. That's just my opinions. Um, yours could be different out there. You let me know what you guys think. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the news and uh, rumors for that. And we'll get into the second part of the show. So the WrestleMania outlook, what it looks like right now. And it could turn out to be just as bad as last year if the rumor card actually happens. And I really hope not, and it doesn't happen, because I'll be seriously pissed off. I'm still going to watch it. We're all going to watch it, but it's just going to be terrible. Um, the potential for it to be good is there. 
uh, WWE has the cards to put a really good WrestleMania, but it always comes down to Vince because Vince is booking it this year. And if Vince decides to do the right thing, but as we all know, he's probably not. He's just going to go with his ego. and He's going to look at his corporate yes men to back him up. Bugs Bunny back there is going to kiss his ass every single goddamn time. So, you know, it's inevitable. It could be bad. And if it's bad, we shouldn't be surprised. So the current booked matches or so- somewhat booked matches are as follows. Brock versus Goldberg, obviously, whether it be for the Universal title or not, is yet to be seen. Most likely, though, because knowing Vince, it's going to be for the Universal title and he's going to put it around some part-timer because that's what Vince loves. He loves the part-timers. You know, you want a you title in there to be? Be a part-time wrestler. There you go. Uh, one surely to happen, Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho. That's basically booked. Um, there's I don't, unless something drastically happens here, which we'll get into my prediction or my how I would book WrestleMania. It's more than likely to happen, maybe for the U.S. title, unless Jericho drops it at Fastlane or before WrestleMania. We'll have to see what happens with that. Um, another surely but booked match is obviously Roman Reigns versus Undertaker because Undertaker has come out and said he's want to face Roman Reigns, which is completely retarded. I don't know why he wants to. Um, I'm still not sure why this is going to happen, though, because Undertaker, Vince could go over Undertaker's word, but, you know, there's so much respect between the two, and I understand that. Um, but Undertaker wants to face Roman Reigns, whatever. Uh, Vince is really high on it, too. He loves the match, so, you know, it's going to happen. Of course, I-, I could already say it's booked. And, you know, who else is high on Roman Reigns? Fucking Bugs Bunny back there. Bugs Bunny. I love Roman Reigns. Yeah. This is career suicide, though, for Roman Reigns. Just It's, it's god-awful, man. He's going to be so booed. This is the worst way to get him over, man. <laughs> and you're going to have... It's probably going to have happen and have Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker. Which makes no sense. But whatever. You know what? You want to career suicide the guy? Not my problem. Uh, big show over Shaquille O'Neal. Sure. Why not? Uh, it's definitely a bathroom break. You know, everyone needs a bathroom break with the five plus hours of television we're going to get here. So this will be the bathroom break. Um, maybe I'll go get a pizza or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, it probably, or most likely will be for comedic relief. I don't see this actually being serious. I know big shows getting in shape and he keeps posting these pictures of his abs, like fat. I don't Those look like the worst abs I've ever seen. I don't know. It looks like he's, he's, uh, hiding a turtle underneath his skin there. I don't know what the hell's going on there. But uh, whatever. I don't have abs. I don't give a shit. Uh, but yeah, Big Show, Shaquille O'Neal. Sure, why not? Comedic relief. Move on. Uh, Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt or Bray Wyatt versus whoever is surely to happen. Um, I love the mysteri- mysteriousness around it, though. I love that uh, there's so many outcomes that could go here, and they all look good. So Bray retaining would make the most sense out of uh, all of it, though. I think it'd be a good build for the Bray Wyatt character. So whatever happens, I hope Bray does retain. Um, uh, another, let's, okay, so those are the, uh, for sure to have matches. Let's get into the rumored matches. <laughs> we'll start right off the bat, the rumored match. I can't believe this is actually most likely going to happen. Um, the Miz and Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella. Not sure how you even start this feud. Like, how do you start it? Like, how, I, I don't understand. Maybe Cena eliminates the Miz this Tuesday in the Battle Royal. Like, how else do you start it? And well, then how will the Natty and Nikki? Feud, that's like the most intense women's feud on SmackDown right now. How the hell do you end that? Will that come to an end on on Tuesday when they have their uh, False Count Anywhere match? Either way, pre-show is where this match belongs, and that's all I got to say about that. Another rumored match is the current beginning of a feud: Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. Now. A street fight would make sense, in my opinion, for this kind of match. And it definitely would be better than... I don't know what the hell you want to call what happened last year with Dean Ambrose. I don't know if that is considered no-holds-barred material. Um, This feud could be probably the most intense feud of the year. Both superstars are so good with putting... A feud, this feud on another level, and I think it's going to go on to another level in the upcoming weeks leading to WrestleMania. I can see Corbin coming out on top if this happens at WrestleMania for the IC title. Uh, maybe he can get both belts at one time. I can see Baron Corbin holding both belts. I know I'm uh, I'm being biased here, and Baron Corbin's my guy. I'm a day one, day one Corbin fan here, but it just would make a little bit more sense to establish Corbin as a number one heel if you put both belts on him. I can definitely see both belts on him. That'd be really cool to see. I know it's wishful thinking, but again, that's just my opinion. 
Um, the Andre the Giant Mal- Memorial Battle Royale. No, I can't even know why it's in the rumor section. It's going to happen. It happens every year. Um, but if it doesn't, then hey, whatever. Um, so it's most likely going to happen. Probably uh, we'll start seeing some qualifying matches in the upcoming weeks if that actually means something and have to do it because so far qualifying matches means you know shit all to WWE in the past year so we'll see what happens um if I went with a pick I'd pick Braun Strowman just the uh likely person to win the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal and to get him over because Vince really likes the guy so although he did chew his ass out so who knows uh and that's that move on uh Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha Versus Nia Jax in a fatal four-way for the woman's title. Ugh, this is the worst idea ever. This division absolutely sucks. I'm not sure why Nia Jax is even there. Why does she deserve to be in there? What the hell has she done in the last couple of weeks? What makes Nia Jax be worthy enough to be in a fatal four-way for the title? You let me know, and I'll, I'll see if I can back you up behind it. This division needs a whole revamp after WrestleMania. I hope they do something. If not, they're in a lot of trouble. Move on to Triple H versus Rollins or Samoa Joe. It all depends on the Seth Rollins injury. This is very, 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 and I can't stress enough how very intriguing storyline. Just because what happened last Monday night on Raw. Uh, Triple H obviously having his boy Samoa Joe under his control. And now maybe Owens with him talking to Owens before the breakup of Jericho, so who knows what the hell's going on behind the scenes here. I've seen a lot of predictions, and I all look awesome. It would definitely be a boost for Monday Night Raw. Um, does Seth heal in time for WrestleMania? Who knows? It's predicted to be the week before, so we'll see. Um, and if not, does Joe turn on Triple H? What does Triple H do for WrestleMania? This is so very intriguing. So, so many questions, and I think they'll all be answered closer to WrestleMania time. So, we'll see when that happens. Another rumor match is the shitty Styles vs. Shane match. Because, you know, that's such a hyped match. Styles vs. Shane McMahon. Uh, I would love to see Angle instead, as I've said. Uh, but, of course, who doesn't? Like who? I'm sure if I ran a poll, I'm actually probably going to run a poll and put Styles vs. Shane or Styles vs. Angle. I guarantee you, there's probably going to be a couple of goons to pick Shane and Styles. But the majority will be for Angle vs. Styles. Guarantee. We'll see what happens. Um... I'm not sure if Shane versus Styles is a good idea, though. Vince, you need to get your head out of your ass. You don't have to have a fucking McMahon in WrestleMania. You need to calm down. Um, can Shane even keep up with Styles to have a good match? Because Taker carried him. Like I said before, last year WrestleMania, he carried him. It wasn't Shane carrying Taker. It was the opposite. AJ versus Styles. Or, it's AJ versus Styles. Styles versus Angle. Just makes more sense, and that's WrestleMania. That's a WrestleMania type match, and that's what you do at WrestleMania. Come on, Vince, wake the hell up. Wake up, man. All right. So now those are the rumor matches. This is how I would book WrestleMania this year, and we'll start off with the pre-show. First pre-show match is the rumored women's invitational battle royal whatever i think is a good idea for a pre-show type match they can throw in a pre-show i don't give a fuck they can put it in there um i would have it as the first pre-show match just so you can get that hell out of the way uh we had to be contacting former women for a wrestlemania appearance so apparently this is the rumored thing to happen they've already signed kelly kelly for three years to be the amelina uh replacement role which is c- completely garbage um Darby also rumored to have talked to Victoria, so I'm guessing Lita's probably going to be in it. If Trish is okay, I know she just had a baby, but if she's okay to wrestle more uh, still or have a quick appearance in that, I see her being in it too. And it's going to be interesting to see who else they contact for this. Maybe uh, Beth Phoenix comes out of retirement. Uh, Karma makes an appearance. We'll see. Um, but whatever. I'd have it as the first match. And, you know, I give it to Kelly Kelly since you did sign her for three years and you want her to be the new Emelina character. You know what? Have her win the Battle Royal. Why not? We'll go with that. Uh, second pre-show match. This is interesting. I would definitely have this happen. The Miz versus Ty Dillinger. This feud started way back in December over Twitter. The guys were bickering at each other. You can base the feud on that. Um, it would be a definitely good beginning feud for Ty Dillinger's main roster debut. Um, he would be so over with the 10 chance at WrestleMania just because of the, the type of crowd WrestleMania is. Uh, you can even have Miz try the Daniel Bryan yes chance, but a bit overcome and... 
you know, the crowd just deny him and do the 10 chance instead. I could definitely see that happening. He has such a cool moment. And it would be good to see a good pre-show match for once. You know, nothing that would bore the hell out of us. This would be pretty cool. And I definitely would get the fans into it. I think it would be a pretty good idea. A third pre-show match I think that could happen is Neville versus... O- oh, yeah, okay. So the winner of that match, I definitely picked Ty Dillinger. Obviously, bias pick is the hometown boy. But uh, third pre-show match, Neville versus Austin Aries for the Cruiserweight Championship. Aries apparently is all healed up from his eye injury, um, and there's a rumor of him beginning to feud with Neville. So Aries would be the face in this situation, which is really, really interesting. Um, I would love this to be on the main card, but knowing Vince again, it definitely would be a pre-show match. And, you know, that's where I'm going to put it in how I would book it. So, you know what? I know it's how I would book it, and I should go different, but I would put it as the last pre-show match just to get the crowd hyped up for the main card. Um, So, the winner out of that match, I'd pick Austin Aries, be the new Cruiserweight Champion going into a new year with 205 Live after WrestleMania. That's just my pick. Uh, Into the main card, I would start off with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. You know, you want to get that match out of the way. I think it's actually a good way to get the crowd into it and a good start for WrestleMania and a good kickoff match for uh, the main card. Uh, there, you can have a lot, a lot of cool spots in it. Obviously, you're going to have Kofi Kingston in there. Uh, maybe you have a big guy like Strowman. Maybe someone tries to eliminate him by picking him up, but doesn't actually really. Uh, Strowman would actually be made to look dominant, I think, in this match. He'd probably have the most eliminations out of any Andre the Giant more about a Royal, and I think this would only be three. But still, I think it would be a good showing for Strowman, and I definitely would pick Braun Strowman in this match. Um Next match on the main card, I would have Alexa Bliss versus Naomi for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, this should be very interesting to see uh, who actually goes into WrestleMania with the title. And I'm talking about real life right now, like uh, what actually is happening to WWE. Because it looks it, Alexa keeps teasing that she might have the title going to WrestleMania or maybe Naomi will keep it. I love that there's uh, still a mysteriousness around it. Um, so I love a lot of teasing going on here. Um it should be a really good match, though, if this actually happens. And, and how I would book it, it would be a really good match. Um, it's definitely a really good match for early in the card for the second match. Uh, Naomi's entrance will probably be phenomenal. I mean, it's going to be in her hometown. And we already know how good her entrance is on SmackDown. It's just going to be interesting to see what they do with that. But if I had to pick a winner, I would pick Naomi. But have Alexa come into this match as the champion. And I think that's what they should have done originally. Have Naomi win it there. Build this feud up until then. But, you know, Derby likes to do their own way. But this is how I would book it. Go have Alexa come into WrestleMania as a champion. Win the title back. And have Naomi beat her at WrestleMania in her hometown. Just a good showing for Naomi and a good WrestleMania moment for her. The third match of the main card. I would put Cesaro and Sheamus versus Enzo and Cass versus the club and a triple threat tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Championships. This could actually be a good WrestleMania quality match, ladies and gentlemen. I really think this has the potential to be unreal. There's lots of room for good spots here. Um, I'd say I'd have it as an elimination style match too. Uh, you probably don't have an elimination until the very end of the match. So have all three teams get involved throughout most of the match. And I have to pick a winner. I think I would pick Enzo and Cass. They're long overdue for a championship title to have around their waist, man. They, they got screwed over in NXT and never got the title, so I think this would be a good way to have them uh, finally win their tag team championships at WrestleMania. It'd just be a really good feel-good moment. Um, but that's not going to take anything away from Cesaro, Sheamus, and the club. I think they'll put also a good showing into this match. Fourth match I would have, and I know it's very early in the card, and you probably get, I'm probably going to get critiqued for this, but AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle, I would have this early in the card. Like, holy shit, the crowd would be so hyped for that. And they would probably chant, holy shit. I was so debating on putting this so early in the card, man. But you know what? I think this is a good spot for it. Um, would be one of the matches of the night, 100%. Uh, this might even be Feud of the Year if they book it properly. I just see it being such an unreal match. And I could get so into it. The, the, the wrestling we're going to get out of this and the technique we're going to get out of this and just everything out of this match is going to be so good. And it's screams WrestleMania quality. But if I'm going to pick a winner, I'm going to pick AJ Styles. And I think it's going to be very, very, very close. But I don't think this would be Kurt Angle's last match. Um, I do say they probably hold him off until next year's WrestleMania as well. But I think this would be very, very close and a good way to put Angle or uh, Angle to put Styles over at WrestleMania. I just It's going to be very, very tight. It's not going to be by a long shot. It's going to be very, very close. Um, 
Next match, so number five, I would have Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship. Keep it simple. Have the champion go one on one with the Royal Rumble mat, a Royal Rumble winner. You don't need to add Luke Harper or anyone else. Just have one on one. The story builds itself and it is the best story I've ever seen out of these two. Um, the turn is going to be something too when Randy Orton finally turns on his master. Um, if they go this route, so this is only if they go the Orton White route. Um, should be very, very, very intense match. I see the crowd really, really getting into this as well. And if I pick the winner, I would go with Bray White retaining the title and carry on the Wyatt legacy and building from it as the WWE champion. Uh, next match at number six, I would have Dean Ambrose versus Corbin for the IC title. And yes, I would book it as a street fight. It would be a very, very, very physical match. I think way more physical than whatever the hell that was last year. I keep mentioning it because it was so bad, Lesnar and Ambrose. Um, both have been proven to be very like nutty in no holds barred situations. Um, the feud is going to be very, very good. I think going into WrestleMania and the accumulation at WrestleMania, is just going to be perfect. It's just going to be so perfect. And if I had to pick a winner out of this, I would pick Baron Corbin to win his uh, first title with the intercontinental championship. I think that'd be a pretty cool moment for Baron Corbin. Um, at number seven, I would have Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho versus Finn Balor in a triple threat match for the Universal Championship. Now, hear me out, guys. Balor is going to return before WrestleMania. It's already been announced that he's got a, uh, some live events and some live events near me, which I'm trying to get tickets for. Um, so he's announced to be back before WrestleMania. Uh, he would be back wanting his title that he never lost. The ongoing feud of Jericho and Owens can be added to this. And, you know, you can have Jericho call Finn Balor a stupid idiot. And what are you doing here? This is the, this is between me and Owens. You know, there's so much they can do with this. And it, I actually love it. Um, this will definitely be a boost for Raw and the Universal Championship to make it more prestigious than it has been in the last half a year. Or ever since it, it debuted, to be honest. Um, this match would be epic, though. Let's, you have Owens, Jericho, and Balor. What more can you ask for? The potential of Jericho having two titles too, if he doesn't drop the US title, would just increase the value of this match. And I see it being just such an epic match. And I have to pick a winner. I'm picking Finn Balor because Jericho's going on his tour with Fozzie. Maybe he drops the US title before WrestleMania or the Raw after. And then finally he's on his tour. Um, I say Finn Balor does pin Owens in this situation. Maybe Jericho screws over Owens, something like that. Um, but I think Balor bring, gets back his championship that he never lost, and they run with Balor like they were supposed to last year for 2017. Now, moving on to the sort of cool-down match, but I think it's still going to be epic, in my opinion. Uh, number eight, Sasha Banks versus Bailey versus Charlotte. That's it. Triple threat. No one else. Not Nia Jax, Okay. For the Raw Women's title. Nia Jax does not belong in this match, in my opinion. This division, though, is so hard to book. It's so hard to book. On account of the, how dumpster fire it actually is. It's garbage. I can only see a triple threat making sense in this situation. I don't see Sha uh, Sasha turning heel, though, until the Raw before WrestleMania. Have her turn on Bailey as an advantage leading into the WrestleMania match. Have her beat down Bailey. Like have her come out for the save when Charlotte's trying to beat down on Bailey. Have Charlotte run away and have uh, Sasha help up Bailey and then you know give her the bank statement. Go into WrestleMania as a heel. That would be the perfect time to do it. Um, it gives Bailey like an overcoming odds underdog story with two heels in the match. Um, we definitely ha ha love Bailey to finally win her first title here in this situation. And I hate what they did with her with the whole Raw thing. Um, but in that case, you know, you can have Charlotte win the title back at Fastlane and then have Bailey beat Charlotte and end her streak at WrestleMania and pin her. And then, you know, maybe feud with Sasha after WrestleMania. But yes, I would pick Bailey to win this match and end Charlotte's WrestleMania streak by pinning her at WrestleMania. Um, number nine, the obvious Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar match. This is the finale, I am hoping. Of this sort of messed up feud. And I guarantee you it's probably going to be the finale. Uh, it all started though. This this whole shit show started because Goldberg injured himself training in November. If you all remember. So could you imagine if he didn't? Like where we would be right now if he didn't injure himself? It's a good question. Anyway, this is sure to th this is a sure thing to happen or is apparently already booked. Yeah, it's already booked. 
So I would book it without a title, though, however. So Vince, you don't need to put a title in this match. It doesn't need a title. It could put on, you can put it in a co-main event and people would be okay with it and can get behind it. You don't need a freaking universal championship. You don't need a part-timer holding the title. Just keep it simple, one-on-one, Goldberg versus Lesnar. The build for it is already good enough. And yes, it would last longer than two minutes. <laughs> That'd be terrible. You imagine a co-main event at WrestleMania lasting like less than two minutes? People would be pissed. They'd be outright, like just outright pissed. So we get into the main event. And how I would book main event. You're you're thinking in your head, who am I who am I leaving out here? Right? Uh and it's not Roman Reigns. I would not have Roman Reigns in the main event. You know where I put him? In the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Have the final two people be Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. You know why? Because look what you've done with the feud so far. They're gonna have their match at uh, fast lane, have something stupid happen, like a double DQ or double count out, and have them be the final two people. Then the Audrey the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That would just sell like crazy, and you can get the people behind Strowman or behind Reigns. It'd just be down the middle, and that's how I would book that. So yeah, Roman Reigns is not in my main event. This is my main event, and it should have been booked this way, and I'm pissed off that it's not, but John Cena versus The Undertaker. Although this is not what Undertaker wants, okay, I would still book it this way anyway. It is literally the right time for it to happen. Undertaker's like on the last of his wits. It's his last match almost. Basically almost, if not his last. I just I don't understand why Taker wants to face Roman Reigns. It cringes me. Cena and Taker are basically at the end more Undertaker of their career. And it's a fancy match everyone wants to see and is dying to see happen. To ha- just to happen at WrestleMania. I know they faced each other in the past, but at WrestleMania, people want to see it. You can book it career versus career even. You can have Taker come out, tell everyone that, look, I'm at the end of my road. And for the Dead Man's Legacy to continue carrying on forever, he needs to defeat one man. You can have him gringly look at the WrestleMania sign and call out John Cena. You can have John Cena come out and agree, or you can go this way. You can have him disagree, and you can start the feud by uh, having Undertaker... Uh, trying to get Cena to accept it, you know, interfere in some some style or, you know, torment Cena into accepting it. And finally, when he accepts it, the match is going to be epic. Cena is really good at making himself and others look good in a match situation. So, and same with Undertaker. This could be a really, really good match. Um, I think there'd be a ton of near falls, like tons and tons of near falls. People would go absolutely bananas for this. And you know what? There's two situations that can happen here. You can have Cena win, have Taker pass a torch, kind of, you know, seen as at the end of his career as well. But, you know, pass that, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're one of us torch. Or you could have Taker win. I think it'd be a smart idea to have Undertaker win because you don't want to see freaking 23 and 2 next to his record. I'd rather see 24 and 1, and that's who I'd pick. I would pick Undertaker to win this match. Have him go into the sunset with a win and go into the Hall of Fame next year at 24 in one at WrestleMania. Although the one is so tarnished and everyone hates that little one there. But you know what? Have him win. Do not make him lose twice and have him beat John Cena. You know, have him credit him after. Have him help him up and give him a pat in the shoulder or something. That's what they can do. That's a perfect main event. People would go home happy and you just make everyone else happy at home watching it. I think it would just be the perfect way to end WrestleMania. So Undertaker would definitely come out on top in that match if I booked it that way. So, guys, that is how I would book WrestleMania. Um, you guys let me know what you would do in the comments. Tweet tweet us at, on Twitter at NoHosBarWP or by leaving a comment on YouTube. Tweet me what how you would book WrestleMania. I really want to know your thoughts out there, and maybe we can discuss it on the next Sunday Night Heat as well. I don't know if I might do a 2K16 simulation of this card, and maybe I'll do a contest and the winning card I'll actually do the simulation of. Like, I'll pick the best card that you guys tell me and I'll do a simulation of it. So we'll see. We'll talk about it. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat episode number seven on the Host Bard Wrestling Podcast. The show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about trending topics in the WWE. Guys, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at the Bar WP, as well as you can follow us on YouTube and iTunes. So go out there and subscribe to us. All the links will be in the description for you down below. That's it for today's show, guys. I'm Kyle Masters. Stay fired up, y'all.